No moi kaikki, it's Mikko again, and in this video I'm gonna tell you how to do your homework with automated translation and how to do it properly. Because this is a reoccurring issue in remote learning. People do not have time to study and then they go to Google Translate or wherever, type in some crap in English and then they translate it into Finnish. And then they get a failed grade and are accused of plagiarism and excessive use of machine translation. So I'm going to show you how to do it correctly and so that you won't get caught instantly. There are two prerequisites though, two. Number one, so never, never, ever, never, ever, ever write anything that you do not understand yourself. So no matter what the automated translation gives you, if there's a word whose meaning you cannot double check, or if there's a structure that you do not know, do not use it, like ever. Now there's a bit of a catch here though, because you you have to know the language a bit in order to do this, right? So you need to have the basic idea as to what a pronoun is and what a verb is in Finnish and you also kind of need to know how they behave. And number two, and this goes with the previous point, so keep things simple, especially at the beginning, at the elementary level. You do not have to say or write anything fancy. It's totally fine to sound like a five-year-old when learning a new language, especially if you don't have much experience with language learning. People sometimes assume incorrectly that writing tasks that we have are like probing for factual information, and then they go out of their way saying something complicated just to like just to relay those facts. But in reality, the written tasks that we have, they usually just probe for a specific structures of vocabulary and they are there to test or to see how well you master those. So if the task is to write four sentences about yourself, not that that's a very good task, but if it were, and if, that's, if that was one of the first writing tasks ever given to you outside of drills in the textbook, it, it, that task is probably there just to see if you can make simple X is Y sentences, like my name is this and that, or I'm from here and there. You do not have to actually convey facts or narrate your entire work history with very complicated structures of vocabulary there. So even, you, even though you probably have the urge to show off and say something that's important to you personally, you have to resist the urge if expressing that is beyond your language skills at this point. So never write things that you do not understand or at least can have a solid educated guess about and keep things simple. Now let's see how to do this thing. So here is a task in the textbook and it also doubles as a Moodle task in our current curriculum. Uh, you have to introduce a fictional character, now, and instead of ri uh, people writing a paragraph of simple X is Y sentences, what we often get is stuff that's copied from Wikipedia or Fandom or wherever, and then that's pasted into Google Translate and boom, submitted to us uh, for marking on Moodle. And that often doesn't fly, but I'll show you how to do this thing. I'll be using three resources, Google Translate, Wiktionary and ChatGPT, which is an AI chatbot. You could pull this off with just Wiktionary and ChatGPT though, or, or you could use other resources as well. And I also have to pretend that I don't know much Finnish just for the purpose of this demonstration, so this is not entirely authentic. So for this task I chose my favorite character from Battlestar Galactica, the TV show from early 2000s. This is the remake, not the one from the 70s. And I chose uh, Admiral Kane. And like many people doing this task, uh, I found a text about her online and I am just going to copy and paste it because deadline is looming and I have like no time to write this thing myself. So now I have the text in the clipboard, I'll copy paste it into a text editor. And then we need to see if the text roughly matches the definition of the assignment. So the assignment actually has several uh, questions that, that my text needs to answer. And actually the one I copied does not 
answer most of these, so we have to do some editing. Ideally, you would write the whole thing yourself, right? You wouldn't do this copy-paste thing and you would write simple things that you know how to pull off. But since I'm, I'm kind of in a hurry here and haven't been paying that much attention during my studies, but I know the basics, I'll just, I'll just double check what the translator gives me rather than writing my own, which obviously is not what you should do. So first we have to introduce our character. My character is Admiral Helena Kane. Uh, Hales, we don't need that. We can just say she is from. To simplify it, from Colony of Tauron and is the commanding officer of the Mercury class Battlestar Pegasus at the time of the fall of the Twelve Colonies. Now, in addition to this, the assignment wanted us to describe uh, what she looks like and what things she likes and things she hates and, and her family. So we have to add that in. So let's add, add something about the appearance. She has uh, a straight dark hair and wears a and a mole on her cheek. She wears uh, the dark blue uniform of the colonial fleet. She likes Gina. She's a character in the show. She hates Cylons, who are the main antagonists in the show. Uh, her family, I believe, is dead. So we can add that in. There we go. Now this totally matches the description in the assignment, right? And because we are very, very, very busy and don't have much time for fine-tuning or writing this in our own words, we'll copy this thing in to Google Translate and we'll see what happens. So here we are at Google Translate. Make sure you are translating from English into Finnish and paste your masterpiece here. And then, like I told you, never write anything that you do not understand yourself. So you have to start going through this thing. You have to figure out what you are actually going to submit as your own work. So it's very likely that half of this doesn't fly at the elementary level because you probably have no idea what these words or the forms are or why Google has chosen to use them. But Nevertheless, we'll copy the whole translation and paste it into our text editor. And then we have to figure out what all this content is and what we are actually submitting as our own work. We have to figure out what we are actually saying. Now, right away, the first sentence you probably know on, and you can guess Amirali probably means Admiral and then her name, but Harmony, what is this? I've never seen this before, so I have to somehow figure it out. There are two ways you can try solving this. You can just put the word in Wiktionary and see what happens. In case it, it's a basic form, it probably would show up here. I nothing happens, so it probably has an ending or something. Now in this case, Wiki, uh, Wiktionary can, has an entry. So we do, do figure out what this word is. It's hahmo. And for whatever reason, it has the the extra extra end ending there, but we have no idea what that is. Uh, you might know this based on the material. It it was mentioned earlier before you would ever do this assignment, but if not, you can figure it out by asking ChatGPT. So here we are at ChatGPT. This is a large language model, so it's it's an AI chatbot that you can you can talk to and 
it spits out somewhat re uh, relevant and sane replies. But you have to keep in mind that this this never tells you if it doesn't know something and it might produce inaccurate information. So it might be lying to you with a straight face. And it also doesn't say where it got, it got its information. So you cannot really check the sources. So if you did not figure it out, the word hahmo, if you did not figure it out based on Wiktionary, you can go here and, and ask for additional assistance. Can you break down the Finnish word hahmoni for me? Oi! And right away we got the basic form and it tells us that hey there's a possessive suffix and possessive suffixes are something that you should not be using uh, if you are trying to produce colloquial casual finish so you can actually uh, or you have to express that in an other way so let's go back to our text editor so instead of saying ha money you can uh, you can express my character with easier ways you can drop this one right and then hopefully everybody knows that by putting soon no, sorry not soon moon my character is the same as using the possessive suffix uh, there are other things here that are formal finish as well if you've been paying any attention you can see han i think the textbook told you that don't use the word han un, uh, if you are trying to produce colloquial casual finish now you can manually go and fix all of these or you can be lazy and you can ask ChatGPT to write this in casual finish for you so we'll copy the whole thing into the clipboard again and then we go back to ChatGPT and ask ask it to casualize this text for us can you write this in uh, colloquial finish for me? You don't have to add this for me. But if you want to be polite to the robot when they take over the world. Okay. So now we get something that might resemble ca uh, casual colloquial finish. Let's copy and paste this whole thing into our text editor. We can replace this so we have we have the uh, colloquial version here. So mun hahmo on Amirali Helena Kane. No changes there. Ai and ChatGPT changed han into se. Se on koto, koto sin. We know that this means from together with SDA or hailing originally from somewhere. There's an unknown word we don't know. Siirtokunnasta. That looks very long and intimidating. And we I've never heard of it before. So I have to figure out what it is. Now it has the ending. So I can try looking up this thing. Just by the, or whatever follows or precedes the ending. Alternatively, you can just go to ChatGPT and ask it to break it down for you again. Oh, so we learned that it is a compound word compo uh, uh, consisting of the words siirto and kunta which means transfer or movement, and then kunta, which means municipality, but together the word siirta kunta also means a colony. So here, but we can get the basic form, which is siirto and kunta, or we can be relatively certain that that is the translation that we need. Let's go back to our text editor. And the next sentence, ja oli Pegasuksen Mercury-luokan taistelulaivan komentaja, kun 12 siirtokunnan kapina alkoi. Now this has a lot of words, and if you look at this one, the English version, we, we should have simplified this already, like, this is a mouthful, and if we are trying to pass this as an elementary level 
text. This is not not really needed. If you wanna be simple, you can convey the idea that she is a commander of of a ship called Pegasus. So let let's try to fix that with our with the skills that we already have. Uh, now. Google Translate and ChatGPT, they gave us a form Pegasuksen for whatever reason. Uh, we can look it up or we can take a guess that this, this, this is probably the N ending as some sort of because of whatever follows it. So if we just want to simplify this, we can say Pegasus. The back to the basic form and then hyphenate it and then uh, we have to double check what this word means taistelulaivan so it means battleship we can double check with the dictionary if this is this is a word that exists and the AI is not lying to us. So here we are at dictionary. We'll paste the word here. Ay, the word doesn't exist. So either the AI was lying to us or there's an ending that probably throws the search results off. So yes, we learned that there is a word taistelu laiva without the N. It means a battleship and the taistelu laivan with the form with the ending is here it's genitive which is the n ending uh, that indicates possession or association this is basic level stuff so i would already know this at this level and we do want to use this ending because we are expressing the sentence commander of pegasus battleship or battleship pegasus so we we do want the n ending form we just have to check because the in the tv show it's a spaceship not a ship that sails in the oceans or or or, or water so we have to m m double check if this word ship works in finnish now in english it does but w uh, words in different languages seldom have 100% matches regarding their denotations and connotations so we have to double check that Liva is something that we can use for spaceship in Finnish now there are two ways to do this you can just uh, go to the entry for Liva in Finnish oh sorry on Wiktionary and it seems to say that it's a large water vessel but there's a synonym alus alternatively you can ask the ai again so let's ask can i use the word live in finnish to refer to a spaceship So it seems to think that we can, although Wiktionary did not agree. Let's see what else there is. However, there are also other words that are more commonly used to refer specifically to refer to spacecraft in Finnish, such as avarus alus and avarus laiva. Oh, so avarus alus has the same part that Wiktionary already suggested. Let's see that entry. So on Wiktionary, let's find the synonym alus. So in Finnish, alus, we have to double check that we are looking at the noun, not a verb or adjective or anything. So alus, vessel crafts and ship designed for navigation in or on water or air or through outer space. So this seems to be a better term than the ter uh, word laiva, which also meant ship in Finnish. You can double check or triple check, I guess, in this case, by going back to the entry, English entry for ship. Then we are looking for English entry and we are not looking for a verb. This is not shipping something somewhere. We are looking for a noun, a thing. 
and let's see if it's this one so for nautical english can use this one but finnish did not seem to be able to use the same word for a spaceship so we can double check here there are different translations for different uh, meanings of the english word so large water vessel is the one we do not want let's see what it would offer for finnish okay so the liva is there so liva does not seem to be what we want here a vessel that travels through any other medium than land so this this seems to work and the alus is indeed there so we can use that one and there's the word taistelu we can simplify this just to say the alus but we want the N ending. Now this ends in a consonant, so that is often a, a dead giveaway that something happens to the stem in Finnish. So I cannot say alusen probably, or I can ask the AI if this is legit Finnish. So let's see. Uh, Is alusin a correct form of alus plus n? So this is not the correct word. We can double check this with Wiktionary. If we put alus there, we can find the or we can find the stems listed here and the n word genitive we want aluksen this is plural these are singular so we have to write this one aluksen uh, we need the word for commanding officer It might be this one, but since I've never seen this word before, we have to double check. So let's ask Wiktionary. Is komentaja something we could use here? It is indeed a Finnish word, and we are looking at the noun. It means commander, commanding officer who exercises control and direction of a military or naval organization. Okay, right. so that is excellent. We can use that word. Now there, this is probably something to do with the fall of the 12 colonies. We just want to say that she was the commander. That'll suffice. We don't want to get this, get too complicated here. So there's the same word as Siirtokunnan, uh, which we already checked here. And then let's delete this one. Next up, this was about her character. She is a hard leader. Se on tosi tiukka johtaja. Uh, now I know se means he or she or it and is is a uh, tosi is uh, uh, really or very like intensifier. And then this probably means hard and then probably a leader. But since I haven't seen either of these words, we have to double check. Especially with the word hard because this already in english has several meanings like hard as in like difficult or hard as in like hard surface and like tough as a as a character or trait of a personality so let's let's research this one first tiukka so this seems to be a finnish word and it's an adjective it's it's not a verb or anything so this seems to be correct uh, expression it means tight but now we don't really need that one we need to know if this is like a strict as a character trait let's ask our chat bot Uh, to describe a character, I mean, I guess you can, but let's ask more, uh, more defined question. Can I use the word tiukka to describe a leader? Uh, 
means strict, firm, tough, or demanding, depending on context. When describing a leader, it can imply the person is strong, determined, and uncompromising. Okay, so that seems to work. Wiktionary was not 100% sure, so we can we can ask for another term. Vaativa can be translated into demanding, ex uh, exacting, or rigorous. Since I've never heard the word vaativa before, we have to ask Wiktionary or double check with Wiktionary. So that is indeed a Finnish word, and we are looking at an adjective demanding, challenging. So it's probably pretty safe to use this one so let's go back to the text editor and we'll replace tiukka with vaativa johtaja does johtaja mean a leader we have to check it is a finnish word leader commander manager director executive now this the commander being here seems to indicate that this would work for a military commander but we can double check that can i use so the ai seems to agree i mean uh, uh so this is probably the best we can get. So let's just use the word johtaja there. Next up, unafraid of making difficult decisions and unflinching in her will to do what she sees as right. Now, this already is pretty complicated in English. So the chances are that I would not be able to pull this off with my elementary finish. Uh, so we have to simplify this somehow. But just to be on the safe side, because I know the textbook me for uh, listed million forms for yoka, and it seems pretty complicated. It's probably safer that we just cut off this sentence and make an other one where we say that she has to make difficult decisions. Now, saying that somebody has to do something that I can totally do. I know the clause type uh, from the material, so I'll just use that one. Sen pitää. And no tehdä is to do or to make. So we can use that one. Then we need a word for difficult decisions. Uh, since it was here, we can we can try guessing where it is. I know the word difficult uh, is vaikea. This looks like it. So we can... And, so, and this is the verb. So this probably is the decisions uh let's delete everything until then and then double check what this is now this is two words you could look them up individually on wiktionary or you can just cut off the middleman and go to the chatbot and ask break down for me Please. Vaikeita is plural form of vaikea. Ay, so the plural forms are pretty tricky in Finnish. That much I've been told by instructors who have marked my Moodle tasks so far. And they often seem to be dead giveaways that I've been using Google Translate. So, why, But this seems to be the right expression i just need to double check if there are endings that i should have or shouldn't have or otherwise the instructor will catch me from from using a form that i do not understand does vaikeita have any endings oh plural partitive i of vaikea so now at least if they ask me where I got this form, I can say that the internet told me and it's positive, plural. 
Now I know the partitive is used if there's like indefinite amount of something or like non-specified amount. So maybe this is the right form that I need. So we can double check. Is tehdä vaikeita päätöksiä legit finish? Uh, now it doesn't tell us why there is the partitive ending. We can try asking, but this might be too much for it to decipher. Uh, why is there partitive after the word tehda in that expression? Object of the verb tehda. Partitive case is used for objects that are incomplete, undefined, indefinite, or in some way. Uh, so it seems to be the right form, but I might not have been able to pull it off myself. So I guess the ch safest thing here is to mark that I got this form from automated translation. Uh, now, oops. Now this stuff, we are getting complicated enough so let's delete whatever else there was and let's add a mention that this is not entirely my own work now I, I, unless my entire submission is full of this stuff or if I'm if I'm trying to hide this, I think it'll be fine in this case. Hopefully, hopefully the instructor will agree. At least I've got most of the sentence. I did it myself. Next up, these traits sometimes compel her to feel that she has been left with no general life. This is way too complicated. I don't want to say anything like this because I would be struggling to say that thing in English as well. So. So let's delete the whole sentence. Next up, we are describing her looks and, and uh, appearance. So she has a straight dark hair. Sella on suorat tummat hiukset ja luomi poskessaan. So this one we got from ChatGPT when we asked it to make this colloquial finish. Uh, now this seems to be like se plus LLA, but I've never seen this form, so we have to double check what this is. Oh, so it gave us a wrong form, but does realize that it is not a valid Finnish word or expression. Uh, but this is an elementary level expression, like if you say that somebody wears something or has a has some physical trait, you would just use the Finnish expression for he or she has. And I know how to do that at this level. So I'll just go and fix it myself. So colloquial LLA ending of or LLA form of se is sillä. So I'll just put it there. Suorat tummat hiukset. And this word, these words have been in the vocabulary, in the material. So I know tummat and hiukset means hair. Suorat, I'm not entirely sure. I've heard the word suoran, which means straight or directly. So we can, but we can double check what this is. So we are back in the dictionary. Suorat nominative plural. Nominative is the same as the basic form. So plural. Uh, yes, the word hiukset was plural, that much we also know, the hair, so, and suora, and it's here the plural basic form, so that seems legit, we can leave that word there. Uh, you could double check if this can be used to describe like body parts or hair rather than just like uh, directions, but this is an adjective. So at least, at least we have the right type of word. It's not an adverb that tells like straight, as in like go straight, like manner of action. 
it describes uh, another noun. So back at the text editor, we are happy with this one. Luomi poskessaan. This was the, the mole on her cheek. Uh, luomi I've never heard, but I reduced it regardless. So we have to double check this one. Luomi. Mole. Benign lesion on the skin. So this seems to be the right word because the English word mole would obviously also mean the like the animal that borrows and uh, and then 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 the, like the planted spy or something like that. But this 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 seems to be the correct definition. Now the Finnish word doesn't seem to have the connotations that the English word has, but luckily we run into the one that we actually need, and this is not the not the animal. If we are interested, we could go to this entry, the English entry, and it probably has a lot of meanings. Let's try now on here. Beauty mark, birthmark, dark spot on the skin, and if the Finnish one is there, we're good. There it is, Luomi. If you want to know what the animal is, it's probably described it described here somewhere. So etymology number two, and here is the word for the animal. And the Finnish word is probably under one of these. That would be kontiainen maamyyrä or myyrä colloquially. Well, but we don't need any of these because oh, the Finnish has two words for this expression where English could just get by with one word with the several meanings. So we are fine with luomi. Then on her cheek. Poskesan. Now I know the word poski from the uh, body parts vocabulary, but I have no idea what this form is. It looks like the VN ending, like the two form, but I don't know why 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 that would be there. So we can we can check and ask uh, the AI to break this down for us. Please break down the word. So poski means cheek, that one I already guessed that was there. Oh, and then there's an SSA ending. So it was not the VN ending, there was SSA hiding in the middle. And the AN was not the towards something, it was the possessive suffix. And these are the things that I've been told to avoid when using automated translation. So I have to get rid of this. But it means on his or her or its cheek. And this is what I want to say. So now I have to rephrase this somehow. So let's get rid of the SS, uh, uh, sorry, the possessive suffix luomi poskessa. Now, now we have the SSA there, we can leave it there. It means on her cheek, I guess, since the AI used it. Uh, if I want to specify that it's his or her, I know that the N ending of, of the word se would be sen, so I'll add that in. And now I am hoping that it means on her cheek. Now, if if you want to double check, you can go to Google Translate and reverse translation, translate this, or you can just go to ChatGPT. Is luomisen poskessa same as poskessaan? It's not the same. Mole on his or her cheek, the phrase luomi means mole. The word order is different from poskessan, but the meaning is similar. Poskessan is, a, on the other hand, means his or its locative form. Uh, so AI does not seem to agree. Now, I happen to know that this would work, but since I would not know it at this level, I have to somehow figure, figure this out. How can I say poskessan? without the possessive suffix. Hanen or sen, so that's what we did. Sen poskella. Oh, so now we, now the AI gives us another ending. It used poskessa before and now it's poskella. If this confuses me, I could double check. 
but it actually clarified it for me already. So luomisen poskessa can be rephrased as luomisen poskella. So these seem to be interchangeable. And in the material, I've been told that SSA and LLA, if the if you express where something is, it seldom creates any confusion is if I happen to use them both. So I'll just go roll with luomisen poskessa since even though the AI previously said that it doesn't work then they gave the same example later on. So, so back at the text editor, we are totally happy with this one. Then she wears a dark blue uniform of the colonial fleet. Uh, I know se means he or she and käyttä means to use. The, I know this from material. I'm not entirely sure if this could be used with clothing. And in the material, it was explained that it's more common to maybe just have the possessive clause when wearing clothes. Uh, I can use this if I want to spice things up a little. Now I have everything is just on, 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 on. So I can take my chances and use this one, or I could just say sillä on and remove the uh, the käyttä and I have no idea what this is it does have the same siirto here so it probably means something like colonial something something laiva this is the word we already had no idea what this laivasto is so I can I can ask what this is, or I could just simplify and say that she has a dark blue uniform. Uh, let's let's be on the safe side and say sillä on tumman sinistä uniformua. Now this this seems to have an ending. I know the word sininen is blue, so this has either the sta ending or partitive ending, depending on how proficient I am with this language. Let's pretend that I'm so proficient that I can tell the partitive. Uh, apart from SDA and I do know that this is the partitive form, especially since since the main word has the same. Now, uh, uniform is countable and this is a possessive clause, so I, I don't think I'd need the partitive, so I can just remove that and I can do this with the knowledge I have at this point. And this is the partitive of, of a nen word and I do know the word for blue is sininen. So let's roll with this. Sillä on tumman punainen univormu. She likes, and then a lady called Gina. Uh, now all of these are super simple, simple short sentences, and th this will totally suffice. But if I wanna, if I wanna show off, if I wanna specify or add an add like a subordinate clause or something, I could do it. Maybe here I could describe Gina a little more because I just the name just is dropped out of out of nowhere. Uh, but Tukeda is correct, right? And it has the STA STA ending. Now I want to say that Gina Gina works at uh, Scorpion Fleet Shipyards. Uh, this this is uh, this is a uh, proper noun. This is a name. We do not have to translate this. And if I didn't know how to say who works, I know who is Yoka, so I can just put that there. I I might not know that there should be a comma there, but let's 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 skip that part. Yoka. I should probably know how to say that somebody works somewhere, right? It, you can either say on töissä or työskentele, but since, since I do not know, let's let's retranslate the whole thing and see what happens. So earlier we used Google Translate to translate uh, texts into Finnish. You can do that, but let's use ChatGPT for this. Into Finnish, please. Doesn't hurt to be nice. 
so uh, ChatGPT gives Duesk and Tele. We can use that one. I've we've seen it in the materials. Or you can ask. Can I say on töissä or joka on töissä instead? Joka on töissä Scorpioni laivaston telakoilla. Now we don't want to translate this because it's a proper noun we, uh, or a name of the of the fleet she, uh, of the of the place where she works at. So let's n let's not touch this one. So back at the text editor, we confirm that this thing we were gonna say anyway works. So we can use that. Joka on töissä Scorpion fleet. Shipyards. Uh, now we need to say that she works in that place or at that place. So we need some sort of ending. We can just assume this would work if we add an I like you would with a non finished word and then add the SSA or LLA. Oh, uh, so that, that is one of those would be a safe guess. If you want to somehow double check, you can either go to Google and reverse search if anybody has used the word shipyards with an ending, or you can ask the AI again. How, how do I add the, oops. How do I add the SSA? Ending to Scorpion Oops. I don't want to trans so it gave us a translated version but we don't want to keep it or we don't want to change that can i say shipyard sisa that was i think what we were aiming for earlier no it's not a correct firm to the stem of the word okay so now it doesn't understand what that we we want to keep the English word but just add the SSA to the English word. So let's go with our best guess and just assume that you can say shipyard is Do I need to use LLA or SSA with shipyards? If I want to say now in English is it at or in I don't know at a ship at at shipyards. LLA SSA telakassa telakalla. No, no, and then it tries to translate it again. The correct form would be so the fini if we translate it tela uh, shipyards, it seems to be telakoila or telakoissa, depending on vowel harmony rules. Now this is this is it has nothing to do with vowel harmony, so this is where the AI AI gets it wrong. But it seems to think that we can use either either ending. So let's roll with that shipyardsissa. Then next expression should be easy. She hates Cylons. Uh, so Cylons is plural already in English. So we can assume that they trans uh, it translated this into plural, but I have no idea what this Aya is. So we can double check. Plural word. Oh, it refers to 
sentient pro robots in Battlestar Galactica. Well, that one we already know. So Cylon is, is, is the base. Then J is to indicate that it's a plural. And then A is uh, the partitive ending. Well, why, why, why do we have partitive there? Maybe it can explain. Partitive in the sentence. Oh, so we learned that the verb vihada requires an object, and we are using partitive to indicate incomplete or partial action. Um, now this is a partitive plural again, and this will not get me many points from the instructors since I might not have studied it that well at this point. So maybe I have to put a note that I got this form from from Google Translate. So back at our entry, let's let's add the brackets here. Let's say we got this word, we, we were totally able to decipher Vihata on our own. But at least we know why it's there. If like we know the logic here, like unspecified amount of something and the ver word vihata requires the partitive as well. Sela ei perhet. This was the same mistake the translator made earlier, so same as he or she has. So we're going to see la a or per. This is a negative possessive clause and it needs partitive. So, uh, so I totally know why this is here. We'll roll with this one. You could go to dictionary and double check. But we, I know at this level the negative possessive clause has the partitive ending, regardless where, regardless of whether this is something countable or or uncountable. Her family is dead. Sen perhe on. This much I know. I know this is her family is. Then I just have to double check if kuollu is a Finnish word for dead. Now you can totally do this with the AI. But just for the sake of using multiple resources, let's check if Wiktionary has anything on this. Oh no, no results matching the query. So this either is not a Finnish word or it has some form that Wiktionary doesn't have. So, but we have to figure out what this is. So we can go to the AI and ask, or we can look up the Finnish uh, English word for dead and see if anything similar pops up. But since the AI gave us this when uh, we asked it to make this into colloquial Finnish, let's ask if, if they happen or it, if it happens to know the reason behind this. So, so this is not standard Finnish, so that's what probably why it did not show up in Wiktionary. So it's the past participle form of the verb kuolla. I have no idea what this means at this level. But it does tell us that the standard Finnish term is kuollut. The u ending could be dialectal variant of the ut ending that is used in standard Finnish. So that totally works. We are writing colloquial casual Finnish here anyway. So let's use that one. Let me move my cat. Say hi, Emma. So Kuolu totally works. We can we can keep it there. Or if you want to be on the safe side, you can add the T. Now it did say something, this being a verb form. And we want to have an adjective here, just so we don't get accused of using a verb form that we are unfamiliar with. Because this does look the same as a perfect tense, which you haven't studied at this point necessarily, if you are using our materials. So let's see if there's a separate adjective for dead in Finnish. So back in Wiktionary, we add the T so we get the formal form. And there is an entry for that one. 
and it is indeed an adjective so it does work so we can use that one it is also a participle this was the form that uh, the AI was talking about when we asked it to uh, explain the word uh, form kualu for us. So yeah, there's our text. That's totally legit at this uh, level. And we did add some clarifications when we were not able to pull off the word or the form of the word ourselves. Now, if you are somehow worried that that this is too simple, don't be, because at this level, this is A2 level that we are talking about. This is totally fine and would totally fly. You do not have to say anything fancy at this level. Now I'm going to give you a secret hint that you probably should not do in real life, but you can use the AI to add intentional errors to make this more like a... or less automatically translated and more like made by a person who does make mistakes. So copy the whole thing. Then go back to the AI and then we'll start cheating. So use the text that we're going to give it, but add two typos and one grammatical error. Let's see what happens. So because we don't have much time, we copy the whole thing and back at the text editor. We noticed that it added a lot of mistakes, way more than we asked for. So let's pick some of the favorites here just to make this seem more human. Okay, so let's drop the T here. Let's say this is a misspelling. Then we need one grammar mistake. Did we get any here? Uh, the necessity clause needs the N ending that much we know and we have it correct here. We, we could fix that one for example. But that might be too elementary. Well, let's roll with that anyway. So that is not proper finish. Now it's got two typos. One mistake totally <laughs> passes as, as my own two level, A2 level uh, submission. Now, you do not have to add these errors. If you know what you're doing, you wouldn't need to do this whole thing at all. You would just write this whole thing from uh, start to finish in the Finnish language. And it would take you way less the time than this uh, Google Translate AI translation fest. So yeah, but this is basically how it's done. Stick to the rules that I gave you at the beginning. Never ever write anything that you do not understand and stick to the basics. Never ever write anything super complicated at A2 level. So there.